Hi, I'm Rocco Stano and welcome to Storymakers. My guest today is Scott Sollers, author of A Tall Tale, How the Ostriches Got Their Long Necks and Long Legs, and Adventures at Lake Oh My Gosh. Welcome, Scott. Well, thank you, Rocco. I'm flattered to be here. I, I must say, I've got three grandchildren, and they love your show. Oh, thank mm -hmm. you. That's good. They Very nice often. to hear. <laughs> yes. There's a label on your books that says Stephanie's Stories. So who's Stephanie? Well, I've got two daughters. Casper's the older, and the younger one is Stephanie. And when she was six or so, I was saying goodnight to her one night, and she looked up at me and she said, Dad, would you tell me a story? And I thought, oh, man, I'm on the hook now. So I made something up. It went over, and the next night she said the same thing. Would you tell me a story? And then eventually I bought a blank book, and I filled out these stories longhand with uh, colored pencils I wrote myself. I finished 13 of them. And when my grandkids came along, I resurrected that book to share it with them. And I thought, these are fun stories. I want to share them. 13 stories? Well, we have two of them here that you're going to tell us about. Well, I'd be delighted to. First book I'll talk about is Lake Oh My Gosh. Now, you might ask yourself, how is a lake named Lake Omagosh? Oh well, this is a lake in New Hampshire, and people have seen a creature or something in the lake occasionally, and when they do, they go, oh my gosh, and that's the name that stuck. There's a lovely camp there called Camp Horizon for children. No parents, but lots of activities, swimming, canoeing, horseback riding, all sorts of things. And two of the attendees one week were Felix and Harry, dear friends, who happened to be named after my grandsons. And they're at the camp having a wonderful time. The boys decide to go out up for a canoe ride one afternoon, and the rules are not too late, not if bad weather's approaching, and always take your life jackets. So they go out on the lake, it's late in the day, the forecast is not very good, and they forgot their life jackets. So on the lake, a storm appears, and the boat breaks up and they begin to sink. Now, who's going to save them? I guess we have to read the book to find <laughs> out. <laughs> yes, I hope so. Have you been to uh, camp? Oh, yeah. When I was a little guy, I went to camp every summer for one or two weeks and just loved it. I mean, swimming, again, canoeing, uh, horseback riding, rain shooting, uh, archery, all sorts of fun things. And, you know, there's all types of camps. Uh, you know, there's a sleepaway camp, and I went to camp, but I went to a uh, day camp. Also was a counselor at the same camp. What do you remember? I remember what I used to say to my campers, and that was, one, two, three, eyes on me. And do you think people have eyes on you now? I hope so. <laughs> This story takes place at Lake Oh My Gosh. Does Lake Oh My Gosh really exist? Well, maybe, maybe not, not sure. But there are other lakes that exist, right? That oh, have different names? They do. There's uh, Mirror Lake in the Adirondacks, and I'm assuming it's because it is so clear that when you look into the lake, it's like a mirror. Rocco, wouldn't it be fun to have a lake named Lake Jump In? So when you say Lake Jump In, it means you jump in. Yes, <laughs> uh, let's all jump in. If you were to name a lake, what would the lake name be and why? Let us know in the comments. At Kidla TV, we're always on the lookout for new words. And in Lake, oh my gosh, I found one. It is predicament. And I found it right here on this page. This was a dangerous predicament. The boys tried to swim, but they couldn't see the shore. The more they tried, the more tired they got. Felix and Harry soon began to sink beneath the surface. Rocco, can you guess what predicament means? Yeah, I think so. I think it means a difficult situation. Yes, difficult, embarrassing, dangerous. I think there's zero chance that they'll get into a predicament again. I agree, particularly if they follow the rules. Talk about this story, a tall tale, how the ostriches got their long necks and long legs. I bet it's very interesting. Well, th thank you, Rocco. I would like to think so. This is a story about two communities living in Africa separated by a ridge. On one side of the ridge is a barren, desolate valley, and the people living there are called the have-nots, and their tribe leader is called Chief Nobody. On the other side of the ridge, it's a lush, beautiful valley with streams and ponds and trees and all sorts of things. And the people who live there are called the have-alls. And their chief is named Chief Somebody. And they also have pets called squats. They look like little porcupines. You can play with them, they cook, they do all sorts of chores. So the have-nots went over the ridge, 
to gather some squats for themselves. Well, the alarm went off and a tug of war ensued that changed everything for both communities and the squats. Are the squats ostriches? I guess you'll have to read the book to find out. <laughs> so what is a tall tale? Well, actually, a tall tale is something that might be true, might not be, might be something in the middle, could be anything. Did you make up the story? Well, I'll let you decide. So have you ever thought how other animals came to be? Well, I'd like to know how giraffes got their long necks. Mm -hmm. Or zebras got their stripes. Or camels got their humps. Right. Why don't you create your own tall tale about an animal and share it with us in the comments? You know, as we mentioned, we're always looking for new words. And in this book, I found the word barren. Let's find it in the book. Ah, uh, here it is. Across the way in the land of the no-haves, Chief Nobody was upset. He and his people lived in a barren land and had no squats at all. In fact, his people grew restless and wanted Chief Nobody to do something about it. Barren, hmm. Leafless, no trees, not much water, just not much there. So would you say like a desert is barren? I would absolutely say a desert is barren. Luckily, things worked out happily in the end, and Stephanie always wanted a story to end happily. Yes, just like me. <laughs> well, Scott, thank you for being our guest today. Marco, thank you for having me. I've enjoyed this. Remember, until next time, read a book in any format.